hi welcome to another video i'd just like to take this opportunity to thank you all for watching i know a lot of you are finding these videos really useful so it makes it all worthwhile don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you like what we're doing and that means more people can see our videos if you want to leave a comment ask a question you can do so at the bottom in the comment section and um, if you subscribe you'll get all the information um, when we upload a new video and don't forget as well to share with your friends your stitching friends okay so let's talk about something now that's probably the most important thing in um, sewing and is usually um, not covered or uh, not thought about and that is the needle the humble needle so I'm just going to um, take you through a few of the different kinds of needle there are lots and lots and lots of kinds so we're just going to touch on the ones that you will come across the most and the ones that I use a lot in my videos so I've got a selection here and these are my fundamental um, fundamental embroidery needles I use every day um, so we're going to look first at the craw or embroidery needle now this is the same kind of a needle and it changes name depending on the size so we'll talk about that in a minute so an embroidery needle I'll show you on the large one here um, a point on the end not all needles have a point on the end so a point on the end and a long eye to take the embroidery thread um, and they come in lots of different sizes so with needles the larger the number the smaller the needle okay so a number 12 here is pretty small um, so you can see how tiny that is compared to my finger there and we go up through a 10 and a 9 and when we get to sort of size 9 and size 7 you'll often see it being called a cruel needle so you might get an embroidery number nine or a cruel number nine and usually when you get to seven five and even three they're cruel needles so it'd be a cruel seven and a cruel five so embroidery twelve ten nine cruel nine seven five and three they're the same kinds of needles but they have different uses so the larger embroidery cruel needles are used usually for cruel work which is why they're called cruel needles so you may see them called um, one or the other but they're the same kind of a needle so then we move on to tapestry needles so tapestry needles have a blunt end so it's not sharp so tapestry needles are used for um, techniques such as cross stitch and black work anything that's counted so anything that's worked on a fabric with discernible holes in that you actually count your threads with and the blunt eye of the needle will go through the holes in the fabric you're not piercing the um, you're not piercing the threads of the fabric you're going through the hole so the blunt eye will make sure the thread goes through the hole and doesn't pierce the fabric so again different sizes remembering the larger the number the smaller the needle so we've got 28 it's quite a small one at the top there 26 24 and 22 getting quite large there so embroidery crawl needles and tapestry needles so let's talk about chenille needles now these are a cross between a kind of a tapestry and a embroidery needle if you like so they again have a sharp end and these tend to be larger in size they don't tend to go as small as the embroidery needles do so they start at 24 or well mine start at 24 22 and 18 for a large one and what these are really useful for is if you've got a much thicker thread that you want to take through the fabric um, because they've got this very large eye so a point to pierce the fabric a larger um, diameter to your needle to make the hole so that the thread doesn't shred when you go through the hole and a large eye to take a nice thick thread what these needles are especially good for is ribbon embroidery um, so if you're doing your silk ribbon embroidery we have got videos on those so don't forget to check those out too and these are the needles you need for the ribbon because you can see how long they are and how wide they are and they take the ribbon very nicely without damaging the ribbon so chenilles for large threads and fibres and ribbons as well so now we're going to look at some slightly specialist needles so we've got here um, to start we've got a beading needle now this is a short beading needle they do come in long lengths as well this is a short one quite a small one as well so it's got a point on the end 
um, and a very fine eye. It's got a long thin eye to take the thread but it's very fine so it will go through the middle of the beads. Often they can get very very small holes in the middle and you won't get a normal embroidery needle through them but a beading needle is especially for this case. So then we've got a straw needle also called a milliner's needle. This was traditionally used for hat making and this is like a beading needle but the eye is slightly different. So again it's got a nice sharp point on it. They're a little bit longer these ones and the eye is the same width as the shaft of the needle. It's actually punched out of the one piece of needle, it's not flattened and wider, it's the same all the way down. This makes it really good for very very small beads um, to go through the eye and I've used it as well on pearls um, which have usually very very small holes in them and I just couldn't get them on the beading needle but they did go on the straw needle because of the nice thin eye. One more thing that I use the straws for as well, um, if you're doing small French knots you'll find that the thread slips through the knot much easier because you haven't got the width of the eye, so you can use them for French knots as well. Um, and this last one here, I don't use very often for embroidery, but it is important to tell you what this needle is because you probably um, all have these in your needle cases and using them a lot for embroidery. A sharps needle, it is sharp, but that's why it's called a sharp needle. But this is um, got a short, fat eye. If I can turn that over, hopefully you can see that. So it's short, fat eye, um, as opposed to an embroidery needle with a long, thin eye. And this needle is for general sewing, sewing on a button, hemming a shirt, um, anything that's kind of haberdashery sewing related. Um, because it doesn't need to take a, a thicker thread or a delicate thread or a ribbon or anything like that. It's a strong sewing cotton and the eye is made for that. If you use this needle for normal hand embroidery, you'll find the thread falls out quite a lot and then makes a bigger hole. So um, it's important to know what sharps are, but I tend not to use them at all in my hand embroidery. And then the last needles I want to show you are curve needles. Now anyone who's ever used a curve needle will know that they can be a little bit tricky just to get the hang of but they are well worth it. I've got two sizes here, I've got a beading one which is nice and fine and a little bit of a thicker one here for stronger stuff and I use these for mounting my work so I wrap my work around a board and then I sew down the board. Because the board is stiff and doesn't move you can use the curve of the needle rather than the fabric bending and twisting and you can use the curve to get your thread in and out. So they're well worth learning how to use. Um, you can get huge ones so try and avoid the huge ones because they're upholstery ones and they tend to be a little bit too chunky for nice hand embroidery. Um, but a 10 or an 8 is, is nice for hand embroidery. And I just want to show you one last thing as well and that's the care of your needles. Um, we have different oils in our fingers and they can, depending on the <laughs> or skin type, they can affect the needles and make the needles a bit brown and a bit black in some cases. So it's quite good to clean your needles occasionally. Do replace them as often as you can, but you can clean them. So this is a needle cleaner here that we sell in the shop. Um, and it's got a, a powder in it, especially for cleaning the needles. And all you need to do is just push your needle in and out and that will just clean off any oils from your skin and keep it nice and clean. A couple of times it can go back in your needle case ready for use next time. So I hope you found this useful. Um, there are so many needles out there but this, um, this video on these particular needles you should find covers most of the basics and hopefully you've got a bit of better understanding about needles now. Very thin eye, so great for, for very small holes. Um, and the other thing that um, I found this useful for um, I have forgotten. <laughs> You'll have to cut that, I'm not doing all that again.